fam. Welcome to the Wind Down the Week podcast. I'm your host, Angie, and owner of Steel City Plant Company here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. This podcast is brought to you by Soltech Solutions. We are going to chat with Betsy Begonia today while enjoying a drink or two. And she makes YouTube videos about houseplant love and care and plant care tips to plant care history and other fun plant related topics. So she covers a lot in these YouTube videos and we're so excited to have her here today. Welcome Betsy. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Hi, how are you? I'm really good, how are you? Good, and Betsy's coming to us all the way from France. So where Real in France, France yes. do you live? Um, I'm about as north as you can get. I'm near the border of Belgium. Uh, I'm north of Paris in Lille, France. Wow. And I just, re- I just realized that my, my humidifier is going behind me. It looks like I'm at a disco, like <laughs> I'm at a roller skating rink or something. Like I have a fog machine. It it's a humidifier. <laughs> I love it. The vibe with the neon light. Did just not notice really... until now. <laughs> my living room is basically ball. a bowling alley. <laughs> I love it. And I see your stags thriving over there yes. under the Soltec lights. Yeah, I just they have one amazing. on right now so you can see how bright they wow. are. That's just one, <laughs> wow. That's awesome. So let's kick things off with an icebreaker. We're going okay. to play Petal and Bloom. So Petal is something that happened recently that was exciting for you. And Bloom is something that is coming up. That's exciting. Okay. <laughs> And then I just go, this is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) So petal. um, Well, right now in France, it's uh, it's a period called le rentré, which is like the re-entry. And so it's when kids go back to school, but it's also when everyone kind of comes back from holidays because in France, we do love our holidays. (laughs) And so everyone, I mean, Basically, all of France goes on holidays in July and August. Um, so we, we actually have words for that. We call them Juliers or Augusters. <laughs> and uh, then in September, you know, we all kind of come back. And much to our dismay, we have to return to work and we have to return to school. And so there's a, there's a name for this period. And there's another element to that this year. And that's that, you know, they're lifting restrictions and so right. for me, I'm not returning to school and I'm not returning to work, but I am returning to society, which is really exciting. <laughs> it's just, I'm absolutely thrilled because we've been in confinement for so long. And uh, so for me, it's just a, a really exciting time. I'm going to social events again, you know, safely and with the correct precautions and always <laughs> outdoor events. But, um, and I, you know, I've returned to the gym. And so that's, that's, what's happening for me right now. And it's extremely exciting. Things we didn't think we would miss, right? Like going to <laughs> yes. <the gym. laughs> Oh yes. I'm just, I'm so grateful. And every day I say, to, I, oh yeah. my gosh, I'm, I'm just so grateful for ordinary life. <laughs> Again, I used to dream of an extraordinary life. I'm okay with an ordinary <laughs> life at this point. I- just the bare minimum of regular yes. social interaction. Is I just awesome. want to put my shoes on and walk outside sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and then what's coming up, uh, I suppose, uh, well, I, I guess, you know, I've, I've already started my second channel, which is really just for vlogging or anything else creative and fun. Um, and I'm also working on a third channel. <laughs> so, wow. Um, The third channel is extra fun because I get to put on wigs and makeup um, and and react to fun and interesting things. And it's called Little Miss Wiggy. Um, That's awesome. So that's, uh, I, you know, I I haven't published anything yet, but I've been working on that for about a month or two at this point. And uh, that's, that's my next upcoming project. <laughs> I feel like we're getting the secret scoop today that no one. <laughs> yeah, know. nobody knows about this yet, except for my best friend, <laughs> which Ooh, is Mira from, Mira from Daisy Plants is uh, my very best friend. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Is she also in France or is she? He, he, he lives in he. Serbia. His name is Miroslav. Uh, he has the YouTube channel Basie Plants, and he's extremely popular with the Hoya community. I think he has over 112 Hoyas at this point. Wow. Uh, and he also collects orchids and he makes 
really wonderful videos that are funny and extremely informative. He does his homework and his research and uh, it, it's just, he's a wonderful creator. Yeah. That is the perfect segue because what my exciting thing that just happened was we got a huge shipment of Hoyas today. So <laughs> that's the highlight of my, my week, my month. <laughs> How many different types of Hoyas? We got in collector series. So it's a mixed batch of the more rare types with the tags and everything. So we have them in hanging baskets. We have teeny tiny cute ones that are in little pots. We have big ones. So we have all of the Hoyas. <laughs> that's very exciting. And what do I have coming up that's exciting? Oh, I'm going to Salem, Massachusetts for the first time to do all of the Halloween things, all the spooky. Oh, <laughs> it's October. Yeah, it's going to be October. Yeah. I, can you believe that? That it's already going to be October. I know. <laughs> I went to a social gathering last week. It was like the first time that I went to like a gathering of sorts. And, um, you know, it's, it's like some expats who live in Lille, you know? And I, on my way, I, th I was thinking of people that I used to talk to when I would go to these events, and I realized I haven't seen them since October of 2019. Wow. Thought, it's been two years, and I just, it just didn't, I didn't realize it. Until yeah, I feel like I keep I was saying, saying, oh, this past two... year has been crazy. This last <laughs> yeah. year. No, it's been two years now. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Oh, yeah. Time has passed in a really odd way. Yeah. So you own a, a shop in where? Yes. In, in Philadelphia? In Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Oh, in so Bethlehem. right where Soltec oh, yeah. is. So we're on the other side of town from Soltec, but we're only an hour from Philly. So it's very, very close. We used to be considered a suburb of Philly, but now it's kind of growing into its own bustling city here in Bethlehem or the Lehigh okay. Valley, a lot of people call it. Um, we are right on Main Street in the downtown. So we specialize in already potted pet friendly houseplants. Oh, that's so nice that you make them pet boutique. friendly. Oh, yeah. but Hoyas are in the milkweed family. Did you know? The what? I'm sorry, you broke up. Hoya, Hoya is in the milkweed family. And actually my cat had a very uh, bad reaction when he took, this is actually not uh, mm -hmm. common knowledge. Most people think that Hoya is pet mm -hmm. friendly. But right. it's part of the, it's a member of the milkweed family and um, it will cause a, a reaction um, oh. if pets take a bite of it. it, it my, I know because my, <laughs> my cats it don't happens. typically <laughs> touch my plants. They're really not yeah. interested. Mine but either, one day yeah. I was walking out onto the patio with, um, I don't remember which one it was. It was one of my Hoya and uh, it had, you know, dangly bits everywhere. And my cat was all feeling silly. And as I was coming by with the vines, he batted at them and he took a nip and then his mouth filled with foam. And I, I took him to the vet, but everything was okay because he didn't swallow anything, but okay. it caused his saliva to foam up in reaction. And then I researched it and I saw that the ASPCA labels Hoya Carry or Carry I, however you want to say it, as um, it's the only Hoya on their website, I think. And it says it's non-toxic to cats. But considering it's right. a member of the milkweed family, I think that actually it, it it's toxic to cats. It can and cause I was a reaction. Huh. Yes. That's really yeah. good to know. It is very good to know. Yes. Yeah. I've been, I've been trying to spread the word. This is the perfect place. <laughs> I'm a cat mom of two. I saw you have. Me too. Yeah. Do you have two? Yeah. Oh, they're so cute. I was looking at the pictures of them on your Instagram. <laughs> they're adorable. <laughs> Ours are our twins. They were the same litter. So oh. yeah. They're, are they just, they don't are, are they, um, what is the word for, there's like a word it starts with an M for, are they, um, not strays, moggies. Are they moggies or are they, uh, pedigree? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> not pedigree. <laughs> strays. They're, they're from the streets. <laughs> okay. They're from the streets. The street cats. Yeah. Okay. One of mine is she's a real street cat. And then the other one is, uh, <laughs> He's a Siamese that I adopted, uh, oh. but for free. I didn't, I didn't, uh, I, oh. there was a, a man who, um, he had just, I guess, uh, bought the cat from um, a breeder. And then he discovered that he actually had to go into hospice. So it was you know, very, very bad news for him. So he was looking for someone to adopt Teddy, my cat, immediately. Oh. And I, I just happened to be looking for a kitty cat. And I found this picture of 
it, it was a terrible picture of just like a hand holding a kitten. <laughs> like he was holding him a hostage. And I was like, I have to get this cat. I have to save him at the very least. You just save him from this situation. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I traveled like an hour outside of Paris and I, I got, the guy didn't bring a carrier or anything. I just scooped him up. And He's like, handed you a cat. Oh my yes. God. I brought a carrier. Luckily, I was Thank smart God, to yeah. a carrier. <laughs> oh my God. Well, they are lucky to have you then. <laughs> so what are you drinking today? Oh, I'm I'm drinking my home brewed kombucha. Oh, fancy. <laughs> yeah, it's not wine. Sorry. <laughs> I'm not drinking wine today either. I have Bon Brewing which is local in Bethlehem. So they're over on the south side by Soltec Solutions. They make a wide variety of beers and they always have eight or more beers on tap. So it's a really fun place to visit. It's a college hotspot for sure in our town. And um, you can check them out on bondbrewing.com for our listeners. And we thank them for being our sponsor today. I'm drinking their fresh and wet. It's fresh and wet hop harvest pale ale. So it's a oh, really it's a okay. fun fall drink so nice. very yummy is it very strong with hops no it's not too okay. strong it's like the just the perfect amount no, it's right in between i can't i can't drink a hop heavy beer anymore i'll just end the night sobbing Me into my purse <laughs> <laughs> and then fall asleep well good thing you're not drinking a hop heavy beer right now because that would be a, <laughs> oh, it would be a better entertaining way to end the podcast yeah. it's a beautiful beer color beers. though it's a really nice colored it is so nice yeah. i saw i was yeah. like oh that looks delicious it is it's <laughs> really good color is my kombucha but i have a pink glass <laughs> <laughs> but we match so cheers <laughs> all right we're gonna play a little drinking game today okay. going, off, going <laughs> off the theme so we're gonna take turns thinking of plant puns and we're gonna go okay. back and forth and the first person that is stumped has to drink okay i'll let you start uh, I don't know. I'm I'm really good at puns. I'm no one trick peony. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a that was a hot start. Um, hmm. How are you doing? <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm really wonderful. <laughs> really gonna poke today in the face. Um. <laughs> Um, oh, I have to drink. I can't stop for a plant. second. <laughs> I'll drink with you. <laughs> All right, long so time no see, kombucha. <laughs> I have some more questions for you, so let's get this started. We were talking about your second channel and your third channel. That was a so fast us- segment. <laughs> yeah, we, we did. We lost. like, I can't do any more puns. We're done. We're over. <laughs> I took a sip. Like, let's call it. <laughs> call it. Okay, so sorry. Go ahead. Your, <laughs> your second and your third channel are launching. So tell us about the differences between each of them. Oh, okay. So, uh, Betsy Begonia, I've decided to go strictly with houseplants because um, I, I am a person who enjoys working on different projects, different sorts of projects. I'm a, a creative person. Um, and I have tried to publish alternate content on my main channel, Betsy Begonia. And there is an audience for that, but it's not <laughs> my entire audience. And uh, I decided to try that for one year. And if it wasn't working after one year, I would start a new channel for alternate content. So that's what I've done um, because I, I've, I really felt like um, a lot of people came to my channel seeking plant related content. And then I started posting other things and it's kind of like um, turning on the discovery channel and, you know, learning about the third Reich. It's not exactly like that because I have a really upbeat and happy channel, but you know, you would never- A little better than that. (laughs) You'd never go to the discovery channel to learn something completely unrelated to whatever it is that they do. I don't know. I haven't had cable in a very long time. (laughs) But um, so I I decided to start Heavens to Betsy, which is really just for any sort of alternate content. 
okay. most, you know, I, I expected to do vlogs because there are a lot of people who enjoy my vlog content and to give people a little closer look to what my life is like here in France. People are especially curious about that since I'm an expat and I've been here for a long time. And uh, my third channel <laughs> is really just for fun because I like playing dress up. And uh, <laughs> so um, Little Miss Wiggy uh, <laughs> is to feed my wig collecting habit because I have, I don't, I don't even know, I, maybe less than 20. I have less okay. than 20 wigs <laughs> in my collection. So you still have more plants than wigs? Yes. Okay. So I'm not crazy yet, but <laughs> I still have uh, more plants than cats or wigs. So I'm okay. doing good. Yes. Yeah, that's a good balance. And uh, so I, I basically just, I put on uh, a wig and I do makeup to, you know, finish the look. And then I react to uh, videos on the internet or that's amazing. Know, subreddits or, or things like that, just for fun, really, because I needed something else that um, you know, it was less pressure and could just allow me to sit here at my desk, turn my camera on and have a really good time. So when will that launch? Because I know it um, didn't yet, right? <laughs> no, not yet. Um, probably next week. So, well, I would say the, the first week of October. I, it's my, uh, the end of September was my deadline and I have some okay. videos prepped. So probably the first week of October. Yeah. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> It sounds super funny and entertaining. <laughs> How many plants do you have then? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm counting. <laughs> yeah, less than I used. I used to have more plants than I do now. Um, okay. I stopped collecting plants and just, you know, I, I enjoy the plants that I have. Um, but mostly because when I moved to Lille, uh, my apartment, you know, it's, it's a very rainy climate. It's quite gray. And uh, I'm on the, you know, I'm on the ground floor. So I'm not getting as much sunshine as I did when I was in Paris. And so I have to work with what I've got. So that's why I have the lights on these plants. This, this entire shelf usually lights up as well, but it's a very like cold white light. So I <laughs> turn it off for now. Otherwise it looks like I'm coming out of a spaceship. <laughs> and um, any others, I try to put them as close to the window as possible. But, oh, I don't know, probably around a hundred. Probably yeah, less. Wow. Probably less. It's still a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's, it is. Like yes. Sometimes it feels like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, how did you get into houseplants? Uh, it, well, I was in Paris and I was living in a furnished apartment. And it was a really cool apartment, but it had a really cold feel to it. Like the furniture in the kitchen was like stainless steel. Mm. In the living room, you had like, I had two club chairs. I didn't have a sofa, it was a small apartment. And um, it was just very clearly decorated by a man. <laughs> right. There was a lot of metal. Yeah, and in very the industrial. Bedroom, <laughs> yes, exactly. It had a very industrial feel. And in the bedroom, um, you know, there was like a, a wardrobe and stuff, but there was also this giant metal filing cabinet in the corner. And I just, why would you put that in a bedroom? I don't know. I never used it, but I just felt like it was so cold and empty feeling. And then one day I went to um, the shopping center nearby to do my grocery shopping. And I saw a uh, Diefenbachia. I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, just, you know, a little leafy plant. Yeah. And I was like, it's going to die here in the basement outside of the hardware store. So it's only three bucks. Like <laughs> I'll take it. And I took it home and I put it in my living room and it just immediately felt a little bit warmer. And yeah. I, then I went on Reddit to identify, uh, to identify, ID the plant. So I was like, I don't know what this is. Like, I didn't know a thing about plants. I knew what a jade tree was. I had a jade tree, I guess, but it didn't matter much to me. And uh, so I had the plant ID'd on Reddit, like house plant ID or something. I don't remember the subreddit. And then I discovered, I think somebody in the comments said like, hey, you should go over to our house plants. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and I discovered there's like an entire community of people who are into house plants. And I was like, well, this is cool. I had no idea that this is like a this is the thing, you know, like I just thought grandmas and mothers, like at the age of 55, they just sprout plants and like pick them out of their heads <laughs> and 
pop them up and then like they have plants. It just didn't occur to me. And I was like, I just got really into it. And then when I started seeing pictures of plants, I was like, well, that's interesting. Oh, that's an interesting plant. I wonder if I could find that plant here in Paris. And then I would, I found a greenhouse and then just, it was downhill from there. And, but you know, I, I just discovered that adding plants to the apartment made it feel really cozy and nice and um, adding too many plants made it cozier and nicer. So right. <laughs> it worked out, yeah. How is the plant scene in France? How does it, does it differ from, I guess you, you got into it in France, but are there, do you yeah. go to like plant swaps and meetups or is it thriving over there? I think that there are plant swaps and meetups. But I, I haven't been to any. Um, I did meet one girl, like I've met a couple of um, French plant collectors through Instagram um, in the early oh. days of starting my Instagram account. And um, but there is a pop-up store. I can't remember the name of it right now for the life of me, but, uh, they travel from city to city and they bring, you know, Monstera Deliciosa and Diefenbachia, a couple different types of Hoyas. Um, I think I found a Deshidia at one of their pop-ups and, uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's grown in popularity just as much as it has in the U S. Um, yeah. but I think that plants still remain a little cheaper here. Because I know okay. that even now I'll buy, it's been a while, but like last December, for example, I bought some Hoyas and people in the U.S. were amazed by the prices. You wow. know, I paid less than 15 or 20 euros for a cutting, whereas in the U.S. it would be like $50. So right. prices here are still, like they have risen since 2008, 2018 when I started collecting plants, um, but not as bad as in the U.S., yeah, we're experiencing some sort of plant shortage right now. I, I don't know if that's across America, but it's definitely happening in on the East Coast. A lot of the greenhouses in Florida had people retire and then no one take over. And that that's where a lot of the plants come from here. And huh. at the same time that that happened was like the plant boom during COVID, the shutdown, and people yeah. wanting to fill their place with plants. So it was bad timing for that. And it really just backed things up. So it's hard to get some stuff right now. Making know that. prices more expensive. So it's been, it's been a struggle, but we're powering through. <laughs> yeah. I always tell people to have patience. Yeah. Because people are always like, how did you get that plant for X amount of money? And I'm like, oh, I waited two years. <laughs> right. <laughs> I just waited for it to show up in my local greenhouse. <laughs> yes. Supporting local. Waiting it out is yeah, the best yeah. Way to do it. And it's so much yeah. more fulfilling because, and I had the, I've always kind of been that way. When I was younger, I collected records. So I was a hipster in college, <laughs> but I enjoyed the hunt and I enjoyed the, you know, like going to the record shop and weeding through all the labels and like you find that one gem. Um, but like, it's also the waiting mm -hmm. and the payoff of your, your patience. And right. I don't know. I, for me, it's very fulfilling. You'll have to come visit us then because in addition to a <laughs> plant shop, it's actually called Plants Plus Vintage. And we have vintage records. We oh, have cool. a whole lounge where you can listen to the records and a whole lot of other like flea finds. So oh, I love right that. up your hipster alley. <laughs> <laughs> So are you still involved in theater? I know that that's your background. I know you're starting the third channel, which will have a focus on that, but outside of that. No, 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 no. How YouTube you... is fulfilling for me. <laughs> yeah. And that's what brought you to France or because you love France, you ended up in theater. No, it's what brought, it's what brought me to France. Cause I, I studied theater um, in Ohio for five years. And then one of my professors convinced me to study in France. I didn't, I didn't speak French at all, <laughs> but she had studied in Paris. And she, like, I remember the students gathered around her one day after class and they were like, where do you see me? Where do you see me? And she was like, I see you in New York city. Like you are, you know, you should go into theater. You, oh, I see you in LA. You're definitely, you have a film face. And then I was like, oh, what about me? And she said, I think that you should go to Paris. Oh. Um, and I think that was more like, I have no freaking idea where you belong. <laughs> but to me and my, you know, my 22 year old brain, I was like, oh, that's so romantic. 
Um, and so I decided to do that. And I just, I, I went on a trip to Paris first, like my first solo trip uh, made me feel like a very independent woman to travel to Paris by myself for 10 I days. Bet. I got it. And uh, of course I fell in love with Paris because anybody does the first time that they visit it. And then I went back and just spent an entire year saving up money, making plans, figuring out how I was going to get there, what I was going to do, how I was going to learn French. And it was just, I was really, you know, once I have my eye on the prize, I can't be stopped. And so uh, it ended up with me selling everything that I owned, except for what I could fit into a suitcase. And I became uh, an au pair, like a nanny. Yeah. Um, and I was a nanny for two years for two different families. One of them was the family of a previous president of the French Republic. Wow. And, yeah, <laughs> yes. And uh, so I lived in Paris and Lyon, and that's kind of how I started to learn French. And then I eventually did get into um, a, a theater school outside of, in Paris, basically. And after about six months, I said, you know what? This is not for me anymore. I didn't, I, I didn't feel at home because it was a very, I, there's just so much ego and it's very, very pretentious. And I was just like, I don't feel this important. Like I can't connect with this anymore. I really loved it, you know, in Ohio, right? <laughs> <laughs> but not here in Paris and not digging it. And I also saw, you know, I have an accent. And it doesn't matter how long I'm in theater, I'm always going to be cast as the person with the accent. I'm always going right. to be, you know, and I just said to myself, I think I want um, a regular paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think I want a desk job. Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up in a startup and I ended up working in tech. And that's where I nice. am today. Yeah. That's awesome. So how long did it take you to be fluent in French? I wouldn't say, I mean, it depends on who you talk to. I wouldn't say that I'm completely fluent. Okay. I still, you know, I hesitate and I stumble on my words and sometimes I'm searching. Mm -hmm. um, I make grammatical errors. Uh, but here in the North, people are really nice. <laughs> They're always like, oh my God, your French is so amazing. <laughs> and elderly people, especially because my French is very formal. I don't know a lot of slang um, because I, I studied from books. And so right. elderly people will always tell me, your French is so much better than any young person today <laughs> it's because I'm speaking so formally, but if I right. go to Paris, Oh, they'll, they'll correct me all day and all night. <laughs> so the differences between the different cities are pretty big. It sounds like Paris and the rest of France. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Paris is just its own thing. <laughs> yeah. Paris is completely different. Yeah. Yeah. It's like New York city versus Pennsylvania. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah. It's a very yeah. different vibe, different place. So a lot of people come to America, or sorry, they come to France and um, they only go to Paris and that's their only impression of France entirely. And right. it's, it shouldn't be. It's like going to New York yeah. City and saying like, that's America. Right. Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> Not at all. All right. Well, we are going to get ready to wind down, but we're going to tackle some trivia first. So uh -oh. first... <laughs> Last week's trivia question was how many species of edible plants are there? Do you want to take a guess before I read the answer? How many species of edible plants? There are like over 1600 types of. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't even, I can't even like ballpark. Uh, two, uh, it's got like uh, 10,000. 300,000. That's it? Oh, I was like 300. Yeah. Wow, 300,000. 300, okay. So of Earth's estimated 400,000 plant species, we could eat about 300,000 of them if we really wanted to. Yet humans only eat a mere 200 species globally. So we are only about half of our plant source protein and calories are coming from maize, rice, and wheat. So yeah, we're nobody really likes not doing all, all we can do. Right. Yeah. <laughs> those Nobody's flowers that those. are ornamental. We know we can eat them. We're not gonna. <laughs> and congratulations to last week's winner. Keep an eye out for a message from us and you'll receive a free Soul Tech Solutions t-shirt for getting that answer <laughs> correctly. <laughs> so today's riddle, and we'll announce the correct answer next week. 
I'm yellow, but I'm not a banana. I can be over 10 feet tall, but I'm not a giraffe. I have seeds, but I'm not a lemon. I can provide oil, but I'm not canola. I'm a plant, but I'm not a rose. A sunflower. Maybe. We'll find out next week. <laughs> so write down your guesses in the comments or in your reviews, and we'll pick a random person with the right answer, give them a shout out in the next episode, and then you'll get a free t-shirt or another fun prize as well. But you got to tune in. So thank you, Betsy, for joining us for today's episode. It was so nice speaking to you and getting to know you really better. Nice speaking to you. Thank Is you. there anything else that you'd like to say to close out today's episode? No, it's just been an absolute pleasure. It was so nice meeting you. And let's hear your social tags so that everybody can follow along from home for our listeners. Where can they find you on all of the channels? You can find me at youtube.com slash Betsy Begonia. YouTube.com slash Heavens to Betsy. B-E-T-S-Y or Instagram.com slash Betsy Begonia. Perfect. At Betsy Begonia. I don't know what I said. It's who's, who's shopping on the web browser? I don't know. <laughs> well, thank you to all of our listeners for tuning in. We can't wait to keep the conversations and the booze flowing. So we'll talk to y'all next week. Wine Down the Week is created in partnership with Soltech Solutions, Steel City Plant Company, Domasi Home, and Lehigh Valley with Love. Thanks, everybody. Cheers.